my screen now and hopefully you'll be able to see um, my uh, presentation here. Yes, we are. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all good. Perfect. Right, I'll start. Well, you know, morning. Thanks for being here with us today. Um, today's topic obviously is about WordPress and very much aimed at a beginner's level. Um, I've delivered this presentation probably around 11 or 12 times now, so I think I've got most of it in there. However, I'm bound to miss out something. So if you're not sure on something or you want me to cover something that I haven't, feel free to ask a question and we can cover it at the end. I'll leave around 10, 15 minutes for questions at the end. Um, so let's start then. So why is, you know, why are we here telling you about WordPress today? Well, we're a web and SEO company in Leeds. We started in 2016 and since then, we've created over 120 websites, most of those in WordPress. So we've got lots of experience and we know the CMS, it stands for Content Management System, we know it inside out. Um, if you have a look at us on Google as well, you'll see I think we've got now 32 five-star reviews and we've got another 16 or 17 on Facebook. So um, obviously people like what we do, we're well known within Leeds and um, we're good at what we do. Um, but putting web aside, we also rank for over 400 keywords that has a value of over £6,000 per month. So we get a lot of organic traffic. So not only do we build sites, but we build sites that appear really high up on Google, which I think is really important. Um, because once people have their website, you then move on to the second stage, which is how on earth are you going to get people to come to your website, which is really important. And again, there are a couple of webinars um, from other suppliers around this and, and lastly, we're a digital enterprise approved supplier and mentor. So if you are looking to get funding for any web projects, um, you can get potentially get some funding through the digital enterprise and uh, contact one of their approved suppliers to get that work done. So, uh, is, um, sorry to interrupt. Could you, um, could you navigate to the bottom uh, menu bar and click the present slides button so you know uh, people can see the slides in full screen ah yes of course okay lovely thank you <laughs> yeah let me get to where i was right so um who is this presentation for so first of all it's for anyone who wants an introductory level of wordpress uh, maybe your you know uh, get around the WordPress before or maybe you haven't even been inside the dashboard before you don't have, you know you don't really know what to expect so it's a it's a very kind of beginner level overview of WordPress and that being said it's perfect for business owners so if you're a business owner and you want to know a bit more about your website or maybe you don't even have a website then it's a great place to start um, webmaster is a bit of an old school term um, but whoever is in charge of your website in, in, in your business, it's great for them. Even if they don't really have that much experience within WordPress, it'll be a good refresher for them and maybe a bit of an eye opener on what other things they can do also. Um, and then finally, it's good for, for other people in your business, maybe marketing personnel, um, IT professionals, whoever, whoever wants to be involved in the website or maybe whoever you want to delegate that responsibility to as well. So it's really good, even if you're not directly the webmaster, um, it would be good to share with your other employees who maybe may want to add to the site or can benefit by having knowledge of how the website actually works. Um, now, before we actually crack on to the structure of the presentation and what we're gonna copy, what we're gonna go over, sorry, um, I just wanna do a quick question to everyone. Um, two quick questions. Um, the first question is, you know, do you, do you currently have a WordPress website? So if you do, I'd like you to open the, uh, the chat section and, and type in yes. And if you don't, just, just type in no. I just want to see a gauge, a, a response for how many people actually have WordPress websites. And that will allow me to better tailor this presentation. So we've got Phil. He, he has a, a WordPress website. That's great. We've got lots of yeses, that's really good. A couple of no's. Okay, 
that's good. So it's roughly about 50-50, probably a few more yeses than no's, but that's probably what I would have expected. That's good. Um, second question, and this is the most kind of important question, I suppose, for, for you watching the, the webinar and taking part in it, is do you have any experience in WordPress? So yes, if you've got any experience at all, or no, if you're completely new to it, you've never logged in in your life. Okay, so a few more no's here which is good, we can cover some really good information. So probably two thirds now, okay, that's, that's good information for me and that's gonna help me better tailor this presentation. So we'll move on to the structure of today's webinar. So this is the brief, brief structure of what we'll be covering. First of all, we'll be talking about the WordPress dashboard and settings. And then we'll be talking about themes and plugins. We'll move on to pages and posts. And then we'll talk really importantly about how to update and maintain your website. Really, really crucial part there. And then lastly, as I said, we'll keep around 10, 15 minutes for any Q&As. Um, if we do have any Q&As directly relevant to the topic we're talking about, please feel free to ask them. And then I think Audrius can just butt in and ask the question to me and I can do my best to answer it. So um, if we move on then and we'll talk about the dashboards and settings. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about and it's best done by if I, obviously I'm sharing my screen with you now, but if I actually go into a WordPress site and I can talk you along it, and you'll, you'll be able to make a bit more sense of it rather than me just talking with a white, a white um, PowerPoint. So what I'll do is I'll just exit this full screen view and I'll switch to the, the website. So this is the WordPress dashboard. So for those of you that are not familiar with WordPress at all, this is the dashboard. So when you actually log into WordPress, this is kind of what you'll see. Now, each dashboard will be slightly different. Um, it all depends what software you're using. Uh, again, we'll come on to software immediately after we talk about the dashboard and some general settings. Now, at a quick overview, you can see we've got a column on the left-hand side here where we can detail lots of different things from pages, all the way through to settings that's further down. If we scroll down, we'll see more, more things. So most of what we do in WordPress originates from the dashboard. And again, most of it we access through this left column here. There are, as you can see, there's a top bar here where we have lots of other little settings as well. This depends on what plugins and then what themes you use, which again, I'll come on to very, very shortly. Okay, so once you're logged in, you'll find something like this. Now, if I just go back to the presentation, We've, we've looked at the dashboard. I want to talk a bit about permalinks. Well, what are permalinks? If we scroll down here, we'll find settings. And if we hover over settings, we'll see an option for permalinks here. I'm just going to click on it now. As you can see here, we've got lots of different options um, for permalinks. Now, what I'd recommend is selecting the post name option for permalinks. Now, what does that actually do? Well, it's very, very simple. It essentially puts the, the name of the page you're creating as the end, at the end of the website. Now, a really good, it shows a really good example here. I'll just highlight it. So let's say you're creating a new page about, I don't know, let's say you've got a website and you sell caravans, making something up, and you're creating a page, um, a, a sales page, so maybe you want to call the page sales, that's the name of the page. But what are you actually going to give the name of the URL? This is the URL here that we've got highlighted. Well, if we actually call the page sales, it will automatically attribute this URL and this here will be known as sales. Now, if you didn't click something like this, if you clicked maybe day, day and name, it would actually include the dates you published that page. Now, we don't necessarily want that. Um, we want content to be what's called evergreen. Evergreen content is content that doesn't expire, it's not dated. 
um, because content that is dated, it has a shelf life to it. So imagine if you've got a sales page that has a date in 2015, well, it's kind of, it's, it's telling Google it's not very relevant. So it's really good if we adopt the post name option um, going forward. Now, sometimes it's selected by default, sometimes it's, it's not. If I go back to the presentation now, I want to talk about users. So, obviously in WordPress, you can have several users. So maybe you've got a user, you've got, you know, you've got your own login yourself, maybe you've got various employees who have different levels of access, maybe to upload content, maybe you've got a developer just for maintenance, you can have several people contributing to your one WordPress website. Well, how do we do that? It's really simple. If we scroll down again on the left, we'll find a section that says users. And we can click on all users and we can see who has access to the site. Now, again, you can see we've got four users here. These, obviously, I've got my own login details and then my employees have got their login details as well. So if you wanted to add someone to the site, so let's just say, maybe you've hired someone to do some SEO work for you and they're going to put it on the site that's included in part of their work, then it's really, really simple. You just click add new user at the top here and that fill out the details, the very basic details. It'll ask you for their email address and you'll be able to add them as a user rather than you giving your own credentials to them. So it's really good practice. Whoever has access to the website to have individual access, you don't, you don't want people accessing on the same user account. You want everyone to have their own individual access. And another really important point here is you can actually administer roles. Now, if I just kind of go over here, you'll be able to see what I mean. So I've got two developers. We've got Ben and Brandon. They have admin access, which means they can edit the whole site. Um, they, they need the access to do their job. Um, it's a, quite a technical role, whereas Louise down here, Louise just adds content. She doesn't need to go into certain files or, 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 or look at code. Louise just needs to add the text essentially. So she has a, a downgraded level of access, but that's really good because if we did give Louise that full access, then there's a possibility that she may do something wrong. She may edit some code that she's by accident, of course, that she's not meant to edit. So it's all about applying restrictions on users. Uh, and just being quite sensible about it. And obviously we can change that, you know, um, should Louise need access to something else, we can go into her user, we can edit it, and we can give her a higher level of access. So users is really, really important and a really good, easy way to manage the site. Um, and then preferences. Lastly, if, we, if we're back on the presentation here, you'll see preferences. Um, and what I mean by that is just how we actually look at the dashboard and what we, you know, it's, there's no right or wrong here. It's just how you prefer to work. And I'll just share a couple of tips, what, what I like personally. So when you're actually logged into your dashboard, and again, I'll go back to the main dashboard. I'll click on dashboard here. Um, and you want to view the site on the front end of the site, what it looks like, if I click on here, I can see, you know, this is what it looks like in, in real time. That's great. Now, by default, you won't exactly see this exact setting, um, and I'll show you what I mean. So, the top right, in the top right, you'll be able to see, we can edit my profile here. And if I click on edit, it's going to bring up a couple of options. Now, the one that, by default, this here toolbar is selected. I always deselect that. Um, and the reason why I deselect this toolbar setting here is because if I was then to view the website, it wouldn't be as a user would see it. You would have the top toolbar displaying kind of the first 10% of the actual screen. So you wouldn't actually see exactly what our potential customer is seeing. So I like to see exactly what our potential customer is seeing. Um, and that will give me better data to how we need to change the website. So to perform better. So I generally untick this. I mean, it's a slight preference. Um, that's what I prefer. Another thing that a couple of my guys prefer to do, um, I'm not too fussed, but if we go to settings and media, settings and media, 
and we scroll down to organizing the actual media files by what I mean here is it's quite very very simple is obviously if there's going to be images on the website you have to upload the images to your library to then add them into a page and um, I know some people that love to tick this box and it basically organizes all the uploads into months so it's very very simple when it comes to selecting images rather than scrolling down maybe you know t tens of thousands of images you can scroll down to oh well I only need to see what I uploaded in February 2020 and you get quick access to it there. I think it's particularly useful for the larger sites that have lots of images. So maybe you're in a larger e-commerce sites with a couple of hundred products. It can get quite daunting, you know, scrolling down thousands of images. Um, but if you use this option here, it'll be a lot quicker. So before we move on to the next section, I'm just going to have a look at the uh, any questions. Um, um, that we've got. Okay. okay, so we're going to move on. So it doesn't look like we've got any, any questions so far. Hi, hi, Marco. Um, we've got one question. Um, the question is, what is a jetpack? What is a jetpack? Um, jetpack is a particular plugin. Um, we're not actually going to discuss, uh, talk about it in too much detail in this webinar. However, I'll touch upon it very briefly. Um, jetpack is a free plugin. It has several uses to it. In fact, I can actually bring it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, one second, let me just. The jetpack is often, it often comes with various installations and it's got several uses to it. Again, it's completely free. Um, the reason why we don't use Jetpack, I mean, this is if you wanted to use it, you'd go here to get it. Um, the reason why we don't use it is we have other plugins which we prefer that, I, in my opinion, does the job better. Um, I know Jetpack had a, a bit of a hack a while ago, and since then I've, I've kind of always steered, uh, steered away from it. So what I'm going to do is, when we move on to the plugins, I'm going to talk about what other plugins we use um, instead of using jetpacks, I find them more effective. But before we do so, I'm going to talk about themes. Yeah. Okay. So, so themes. Um, what what is a theme? Well, if I just take one step back, um, the reason why WordPress is, or one of the reasons why WordPress is so popular, is because it allows you to use themes. Marco, essentially, let's interrupt again. Um, could you share a screen again? Oh, is it, is it not shared? One second. <laughs> okay, you should be able to see it now. Yep, all good. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, right, themes. Um, so yeah, there's, themes is essentially a te almost a template that you're using to create your website from. And the massive benefit, and one of the reasons why WordPress was, is, is been taken up so well is because it dr dramatically cuts down the build time. So if you can imagine, you know, uh, 15 years ago, we had to almost make it from scratch. Themes were, were, were very difficult back then and, and weren't as widespread as they are now. So it used to take months to build a website. Whereas now, if you've got a theme, you can instantly pretty much half your build time. So rather than take months to create a website, it can take weeks. And that's one of the reasons why WordPress is so popular. And obviously WordPress is open source and free software, which has helped too. Um, now there's two types of themes. There's three themes and premium themes. As it suggests, the free ones you don't pay anything for. And there's premium themes where you pay a small amount for and you'll normally get a bit more in return and you'll also get some level of support as well. So if I just uh, touch upon them quite briefly and then um, show you kind of where to go um, to get free and to get premium themes. Um, so free themes, in general, I'd avoid them. The reason why I'd avoid them is because a premium theme, they only cost around £50, so it's, 
it's it's very it's a very minor investment for a premium theme that's to be honest well worth it you'll get premium plugins included and it's well worth the price and um, so i would if you can i'd avoid three themes nevertheless i will still show you where to get them from um premium themes are really really good i mean there's tens of thousands to choose from um you, you'll you will definitely find a theme for your business I, I can assure you that and what i'll do now is i'll show you one of the ways that we actually find themes so there's a website called theme forest it's themeforest.net it's a, it's a really well-known website um, and this is where I'd recommend looking for premium themes. I'll show you where to get free themes afterwards, but for premium themes, I'd really go here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this and pop it in the, in the chat box if I can find it. Um, here we go. So I've pasted that in there, and this is where you want to go to find premium themes. Now I'll show you what I normally do. If we select WordPress here, there's lots of stuff that comes up. Um, you can actually see the best sellers as well. Now I can tell you from experience, these two are, are, are very popular. Um, so you have Avada over here, and you have the seven here. I think our, website's, our website is on the seven. This is the theme that we use. And as you can see, it's, it's $39. It's, it's well, well worth the money. Um, it's a really, really small investment and it will, it will save you on so much in time and it will give you additional software also. Now, if you're thinking, oh, well, what, what, what theme do I need? If you actually, I'll choose the seven as an example. Um, if you actually click on to, to here, You'll be able to see they've got, I think they've probably got around 30 or 40 demos to choose from. So there's 30 or 40 themes that you can see potentially envisage your business fitting into. So you will probably find one. Again, Avada, they've got a similar number. Um, there's lots of different demos. So they'll have different themes of different types of businesses, whether that be, you know, dental, whether that be, you know, something to do with pets and animals, or maybe whether that's to do with, e you know, e-commerce. They'll have lots of different demos but if you didn't find what you were looking for from these more popular uh, developers here you can just go to the search box um uh, i'm just trying to think of one let's say you're an accountant you're an accountant and you want to find a theme that's applicable to you now you can see if you scroll down here there's lots of accounting and finance themes I mean, there's, there'll be 402 that match the term. So you can go through them, find which ones are highly rated, and you can, you see, you can see what's included with them, and then you can purchase that theme. Um, but one, one piece of advice what I'd give you is um, don't, be, don't be disheartened if, if you don't find what you're looking for, because obviously you could change a current theme to suit your needs. So what I mean by that is, Obviously, we're using a theme for our website. It wasn't a you know, web and SEO theme. It was just a theme that we liked. And then we edited that theme to suit to our branding, to suit to our business. Um, obviously, it will take you longer to actually do something like that, but at least you'll, you'll find a solution rather than, um, I suppose, searching for that exact theme, which sometimes is quite hard to find. That being said, let me show you how to find a free theme if you decided that was the option for you. So we're going to go back to WordPress, the WordPress dashboard now. We're going to scroll down the left hand side to appearance and we're going to click on themes. So you can see we've got the, the seven theme active. Now I've also got these themes here just to show you um, these are the default WordPress themes. So by default, you'll have the 2020 theme here. Now I, I wouldn't necessarily use that. It's, it's 
it's not grey, I'd find a premium theme that fits your business and use that. Um, but there are default options here, so I'll delete these after this presentation because we don't want various themes sat there doing nothing. Um, now, if you wanted a free, a free theme, if you click on the Add New button here by Themes, you'll be able to see that all these, let me move this out of the way, all these themes are in fact free. So again, you could put something in the search bar. It may not pop up because there won't be as many themes here that, than there will be on that website theme forest that I gave you. But you may be able to find a free theme here that suits your business um, just by filtering and scrolling through and testing them. Um, that being said, I, I do strongly recommend buying a premium theme. Um, again, you know, you're looking at around 50 pounds maximum. Uh, and sometimes you get a level of support as well. Um, whereas with a free theme, you may not have any support at all because obviously you haven't paid anything. Um, so that's, that's kind of themes of a brief introduction to premium versus free themes. Um, if you did buy a theme, you bought a premium theme and you want to actually upload it to WordPress, you would do so here. Um, you click the upload theme button and you'd upload it because you would have down, downloaded that theme prior from the website I posted in the chat box earlier. Um, now what I want to touch upon, and again I'll touch upon it in, in I suppose a little detail because it is, we're going a bit more advanced, is, is child themes. Now a child theme is essentially uh, the same theme but it's, it's a smaller folder that overrides the main theme. So if you were looking to make changes, you'd make changes on a child theme. Um, but to be honest, it's, it's not something I'd look at if you were just starting out with WordPress. If you had a bit more experience, yeah, I think it's important to know about. However, if you're just starting out and you're getting to, you know, you're getting to explore the limitations of the theme, then I think that's, that's good enough. Um, but in the long term, um, do a bit of research into child themes and of course feel free to message me my details are at the end of the slide and I can give you a bit more advice there. So if we go back to the presentation I'll see we've missed out something slightly CSS. Um, CSS if again if I go back to WordPress and I'll go back to the front end of the website. So CSS is essentially some code that we can enter to change the appearance of our website. And again, it's slightly more advanced. I wouldn't expect you, anyone who, hadn't, who hasn't you know, worked in WordPress before or even done a bit of coding to, to, to get into it. But um, once you're a bit more comfortable, I'd explore, I'd explore CSS just a bit because it will actually help you do a few things that maybe you can't actually change within the theme itself. So maybe you have to do a bit of manual coding just to do what you need to do because the theme doesn't have that option in WordPress, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, again, I don't want to talk about CSS in too much detail along with child themes because they are sort of a bit more advanced. Um, but again, should you get to that point in time, again, feel free to let me know and I'll give you a hand and send you some good resources on how to learn some basic CSS. Um, and it's really not that hard at all. So before I move on to plugins, and I think this is probably where we'll spend most of the presentation, probably at least 20 minutes or so. Before I move on to plugins, um, I'd like to welcome any kind of questions regarding themes at all. Hi there, Marco. Um, I just had some nip out, um, so I'll be asking these questions for this round. Um, so we've got a question from Noriko asking, uh, in the user section, I can see 2FA status. What is this? Okay, that's a good question. Let's have a look. It could be uh, two-factor authentication. It probably is. Um, let's see. Two FA. Oh, not. It's not in mine. So I think it will be in, in whoever has answered the question. I think it will be in their own uh, WordPress section. Basically, it's two-factor authentication. So if you require your users to have two-factor authentication, you can essentially say yes, I want them, or no, I don't want them. Uh, it's just an, an extra level of security. Um, so it's completely optional and um, it's a good idea if they have access to that um, but I'll be showing you very shortly in the plugin section 
another way how we can implement a layer of security. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. So our next question is uh, from Brian Yates, and it's, it says, you logged into your existing website dashboard. If you have never done a website before, how do you do that? Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, you need hosting. So um, again, if, you, if you're stuck on hosting, please feel free to send me an email at the end and I can certainly point you in the right direction. Um, so once you've actually bought your hosting account, many host, hosting providers these days have what's called an auto installer. So it's really simple now. Um, simply do it, it takes a minute to install WordPress in your hosting area. And once you've installed WordPress, um, you will have a link to log into your website. Um, but obviously you won't have a link to log into WordPress until you've installed it. Um, we'll come onto, onto this shortly as well in the security section. Um, but I suppose the answer is we, what, what you need to do there is get your hosting, install WordPress, and once you've done that, it will tell you how to access the site. But what I'll do very briefly now is if, I, if you can see at the top of my screen, I'm going to highlight a part of the URL. Now, by default, if you want to access a WordPress website, all you do is you put forward slash WP admin at the end. Now that's, for, that's the default setting. We can change this. We can actually hide this login URL to obviously a secret URL that stops people from trying to get into the website. We'll talk about it very shortly. But that's, that's how you would access your website from, from the get-go, from that installation at, at the host level. Perfect. Thanks very much, Marco. Um, we've got a couple more questions. Are you still okay for these? Yeah, of course. Um, perfect. So Julie Twist asks, um, can you explain the coding needed to change the footer uh, so it doesn't show the WordPress theme and to be able to put your on contact slash um, TNS links, please? Yeah, that's a good question. Again, so the, it's a bit of a difficult one because I can't give you a direct answer. It depends on two things. So it depends firstly on what theme you're using because Different themes have different options. Now, what I mean by that is I'll just illustrate that. So if, if, if you look at my screen, you'll see the theme that I'm using has a nice section at the top, in the top bar where I can change things. So for example, I'd navigate to the footer here and I'd change all that detail, but other themes don't have that level of detail. So you'd have, maybe you'd have to do it manually, or maybe you'd have to use CSS code, in other words, to change that. So it really depends on what theme you're using. Um, so what I do first of all, if I was in that, that's, that, that um, circumstance, is I'd find out what theme you're using and then bring up what's called the, the developer, developer documentation. And now, if you're not sure how to access it, it's really simple. Just type in the name of the theme you're using into Google and then finish it off with developer documentation. And you'll find a really big document on how to actually navigate the theme. And within that document, there should be a footer, a footer section where you'll be able to see how to edit things in the footer. And if you follow through the documentation, you'll be able to work out what you actually need to do in WordPress and your WordPress settings and your dashboard to actually change that. So I'm sorry I couldn't directly uh, tell you how to do it, but if you look at the de developer documentation, it should give you an indication. Perfect. Um, and we've got one, one more question here for now. We'll come back to some more a bit later on. Uh, but we have a Noriko um, asking, are premium themes one-off purchases or do you have to pay every year? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, they are one-off purchases. So when you buy your premium theme, you'll get given what's called a, a purchase code. Uh, that will allow you to activate the theme. So it basically stops you from from having the theme on various websites, you're only allowed it on one website. So you actually buy the license. Now, most of the time, it's just a one-off purchase of the license for, for the single website. However, what's, what's maybe worth doing is, is if you're not that confident and you don't have someone in your business who, who is able to provide you know, WordPress support, you can actually purchase support from the theme developer themselves. And again, you can do this through, your, through the link that I sent in the chat. It gives you an option to actually purchase additional support. Now, I think by default with Theme Forest, they actually give you six months support included in the price of the theme, which is really good. But obviously, once that expires, you may want to you know, buy an additional 12 months support from the theme developer. And then if you've got any issues with the theme at all, you just simply open a support request 
um, provide you know the details of the issue and the theme developer will get back to you and, and either fix it themselves or they'll tell you how to fix it and again it's 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 very very cheap um, I'd be surprised if it was more than a hundred pounds for, for the additional 12 month support so I hope that answers the question perfect Marco thank you very much and then uh, there's two very similar questions here which I, I'm going to combine from Colin and Phil and it's um, if you have a WordPress e-commerce website or um, you know, how easy is it to change the theme? Um, oh, that's, that's a tricky question. Um, it's, I, I wouldn't recommend changing themes. So what you've got to do is in the first instance is see what theme you like the best, especially if you're using a free theme, you can, you know, you can chop and change in the initial stage, but don't, I wouldn't start building your website, you know, building pages, building products, and then change a theme because You'll, you'll most likely than not, you'll find the new theme you're installing won't be able to portray the pages in the same manner with which you've built them already. So um, what I do from a strategic point of view is decide on the theme first before you even build anything at all on the website because it's very, very, it, it's difficult to, to switch themes once you've already started to build and especially if it's an e-commerce site as well because obviously e-commerce sites take so much more time to build than just a standard informational site. Perfect. Thanks very much, Marco. Um, free to carry on. We'll get some more questions a bit later on. Great. Cheers, Rory. Okay, so we're going to move on to plugins. So if I just bring this up here, I'll go back to the presentation. So plugins. What are plugins? Uh, they're essentially pieces of software. So we already spoke about Jetpack before. Jetpack is a, plugins, a plugin. Now, plugins have different functionalities. Um, and I've just listed some really useful ones here that that I've kind of come to just by delivering this course and by speaking with people who are new to WordPress. And these are a couple that I recommend. And I'll talk you through each one in a bit of detail and tell you their purpose. Um, so essentially, we've got the first one, which is coming soon. It's a coming soon plugin. So let's just say you're building your first ever website. So you've purchased your domain name, you've got your hosting set up, you've got WordPress installed, and you're building your website as we speak. Well, it'd be a good idea, rather than having the web page just simply blank, you know, if people, whilst you're building it, why don't you have a coming soon page, which maybe tells potential customers that, you know, your, your new website is coming soon, but in the meantime, feel free to call us on, or feel free to email us at, or, you know, in the meantime, we're still open, so, you know, pop in and visit the shop. So it's really important to, to maximize, I suppose, inquiries, even though the website is still down, if that makes sense. So, well, how do we actually do this? And again, I'll show you a very quick and easy option to how we actually install a, uh, a coming soon plugin. So I'm just gonna navigate now to, to WordPress, and I'm gonna go to the plugin section. Now again, most things we do are on the left hand side here in the left column and I'm going to go to add new because I don't think I've got this plugin or I shouldn't have this plugin installed. So in this plugin area, the here is where we can actually search all the plugins available in the WordPress area, or we can actually upload plugins too. So let's just say you've purchased a plugin or downloaded a plugin from an external supplier. Maybe, you know, the, the link that I sent earlier, they, they don't just do themes, they do plugins as well. Um, you can upload in this area here. But coming back on topic, so we want this coming soon plugin. Now it's already in my history, so coming soon. Now, I, I, there's, there's so many to choose from. And again, you can spend time actually going through each of these results. You can see how many active installations they've got and you can, you can see the reviews as well. So this is a good indication of how good the plugin actually is. Now, I, I quite like this first one here, um, the one by Seed Pro, Seed Prod, sorry. Um, so very, very simple. We only need to do two things to activate this plugin. So we click on install. And once it's installed, it will then give us an option to activate the plugin. So it will take a little time to install.
As that's installing, what I'll do is I'll just, oh, it's done now. So we'll click activate. So two clicks, really, really simple. And that's the same for every single plugin that we want to install and we want to activate. So you can actually see how easy it is to add new plugins to our WordPress website. Now, I suppose whilst we're doing this, a quick word on plugins is um, it's very, very easy to go overkill on the plugins. And what I mean by that is download every single plugin in site. So you'll have, you know, 50 plugins on your website. Now, I, I strongly recommend not to do this. The reason, the two, two reasons why it's a bad idea is because A, it's going to slow your website down. So if you're loading 50 plugins, if your website's trying to load 50 plugins, when someone comes to it, it's going to take a long time to load. Uh, and obviously we want a really fast website. We want a website that loads in under a second or two. So that's firstly why I'd recommend not having lots of plugins. And secondly, for security, which again, I'll come on to at the end of the presentation when we talk about updating software, but security reasons, if we've got 50 pieces of plugins, essentially, which is 50 pieces of software on our website, we're more vulnerable and more susceptible to any hacks. But don't worry about that. I'll talk about that at the end. So again, you can see this is, this is what the plugin page looks like. It directs us to this page where we can now configure the coming soon plugin. Um, so again, let's just say you're building your website. I'd probably consider checking this box here, enable maintenance mode. Um, so you can see your website when you're working on it, but everyone else can't see it. Uh, and again, you can populate these, these fields here. You can put, a, you know, you can add your logo. You can put a bit of a headline you know, new website coming soon. You can add a little bit of a message, maybe put what your contact details are or opening hours, just to keep those customers, just to keep those inquiries coming through whilst your website is under construction. I think it's a really good idea. Um, this is a very basic level. Again, there's lots of different coming soon plugins. Ones where, you know, premium ones where you have to pay, again, not much, maybe 20 or 30 pounds and you get a really nice slick um, coming soon page that maybe has something like an email capture so you can capture people's emails, um, especially if it's an e-commerce site and, you, and you're building an e-commerce site to launch a new product, you may want to capture emails and then you can send an email out once your website is live, which is a really good idea. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to the presentation and we'll see what the next plugin is we want to talk about. So the next plugin is a security one, iTheme security. Again, security is really, really important with WordPress. Um, it is generally a secure CMS, it stands for Content Management System. It is if you know what you're doing. Um, and again, in the last section today, we'll talk about updating and, and maintaining websites to ensure that we're being safe with what we do and we're minimizing our risk. Um, but obviously it's important to have different layers of security on your website and, and that goes for everything really everything from your maybe your domain name to your hosting account to your wordpress account everything needs to be secure so simple things like your username and password first of all make sure they you know they're difficult passwords not your name one two three i mean we've inherited several you know clients over the past couple of years and the passwords are very very obvious and you know we, that's the first thing we do we change those uh, make sure the difficult passwords and don't store them in your computer in a word document called passwords make it as difficult as possible to for someone to actually find such credentials um, again from a hosting point of view there's lots of different things you can do we spoke about two-factor authentication earlier which is a great idea so maybe if you if, if it prompts you to get a text to your mobile and then you put in the code from the text in that's 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 great you know it prevents someone who doesn't have your mobile access to your hosting account or to the website um so the, again there's lots of different security plugins some are free some you have to pay for but this is a really good free one which i think to be brutally honest is well worth it and and if you're doing things in the right manner and you're proactive with your updates and you're proactive with your maintenance i think this will suffice so we'll go back to WordPress now and we'll go through iThemes security. So I, I believe I've already got this installed, but again, I'm going to pretend like I haven't got this installed and we're going to install it together. 
So I'm going to click Add New. And I'm going to type in iThemes Security. Okay, as you can see, it's already active, but if it wasn't, just two clicks, one click to install, one click to activate. And once you've activated it, it will direct you to the plugin page and it will give you a couple of really simple steps just to follow to secure the site. You'll have to put in your email address and then you'll get an email essentially saying that your site is secure. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate to, um, to that page that you'd, you'd see if you had installed it and activated it. It looks something like this. Now, as you can see, there's lots of different settings. As if we, if we look at here, there's 34 different settings. Um, there's no need to worry about the majority of these. Um, simply by activating this plugin and running the quick check that it prompts you to do once you're activating it is, is, is gonna help. But we're gonna just talk through a couple of more settings in a bit more detail now. So, if first of all, if I click on all, as you can see by default, it only selects recommended here. If I click on all, now I can see all 34 variables. Now, if I want to click on global settings here, this is, I'm going to show you three things, um, or two things, sorry. If I click on global settings here, now one thing that's really important, again, there's quite a lot going on here, so I'm just going to scroll down to the relevant part which is lockout whitelist. This is really important. So what this actually does is it will prevent you from being locked out of your own website. So essentially giving you that backup, um, cause obviously if you're locked out of your own website, that's no good. Now there's ways of getting around this. If you are locked out, you can simply go into your hosting account, delete the plugin and it will, it will stop you from being locked out. But you know, we want to be proactive here. We don't want to be, a fixing issues you want to be proactive so if you simply just click this blue button here which just says add IP to the whitelist it will add your current IP you don't even even need to know what your IP is but if you click on this blue button it will add your IP to the whitelist and if you click save down here it will basically ensure that you won't be logged uh, you won't be locked out whenever you access the website from your IP address now one really important thing to note here Obviously, since COVID-19, a lot of people have been working from home and not been in the office. So a lot of people have forgotten to actually set this up from their home device. So obviously, if you know your password, that's great, but sometimes people forget and they get locked out. So if you are working from various different IP addresses, or in other words, various different locations, it's always good just to revisit this area and add your current IP, and it will prevent you from being locked out. And we had a few calls about this and in March when people were working from home. Um, the only other thing I really want to show here is 404 detection. Um, again, I've already configured this, but it, it just it would just take one click. It would look like the one below it, enable. You just click enable here, and it will basically allow you to block people who are snooping around your website. So maybe they're looking for ways in <clears throat> and how to actually access the site. If you click enable here, mice is disabled, but if you click enable, because you won't have configured your plugin. Um, one other thing I want to show is here, hide backend. Now there's mixed, there's mixed um, opinions on this. I, I quite like it. Um, now I'll tell you what it does first of all. So. We had a question earlier where the question was something like, how do I access my WordPress website? Well, if I go to the top here and just delete, um, delete this, you'll be able to see that if, if we add wp-admin to the end of the main website address, you'll be able to see this is how we access WordPress websites by default. Now, if you go to our website, Green Gecko Digital, you won't be able to access our website from the default login URL. And that, we've made a conscious decision that we don't want people to access it through this URL. Now, why is that? Well, I suppose it's if we uh, if you use the analogy of you know your house, um, it's essentially if you're trying to get into a house and you see the lock, well, 
if you break the lock, you can get in. Well, what if you couldn't even see the lock in the first place? What if you couldn't actually access that lock? Well, you know, it's a lot harder to get into the house, isn't it? So that, that's the reason why I use it on our website and our clients' websites, because it actually hides that first uh, potential entry point into the website if someone wants to get in there and they shouldn't be getting in there. Now, other people argue that there's no need to hide this if your security is strong, you know, and you've got good passwords, good safe passwords, and you update your website regularly. And I completely agree with that, but I still think that if we hide this, we're making it one step harder for people to get into our website that shouldn't be getting in. Now, to change this, to change this default WP-admin is very, very easy with this plugin. You'd simply just click configure in the high backend settings and you can change it to whatever you want to change it. Now, obviously I'm not going to click into mine because it will show you what it will show you know what ours are. But if you click into there, you can change it to whatever you want. Again, make it something quite difficult. Um, not you know forward slash one two three, because there are bots that will search. You know they'll they'll they'll, they'll find WordPress websites. They'll put very easy login uh, URLs in, and they'll try and access it. So make it difficult. Don't make it easy. So yeah, I recommend doing that. I suppose the only thing about hiding backends is for some reason, it doesn't work well with some themes and some other plugins as well. Um, and I suppose just, to, just a general note on that is not all plugins and themes are compatible with, with other plugins and themes. So you, there may be a time where you actually see a conflict occur. Now conflict often occurs when two plugins are trying to carry out the same design action. Um, and I'll come on to an example shortly. Um, so if you actually if you actually hide the backend for your website and something breaks well you actually know you can you can actually determine that that could have been the cause of that break and then you can revert the backend back to the default setting um, so that's a brief one on security and WordPress obviously security is really really important it sh you should have a layer of security on your hosting as well um, we use Cloudflare, which is Cloudflare, which is quite good. Um, and again, our hosting supplier has a link with Cloudflare, so it's all very easy to set up. And we've been doing that for a number of years, and it works really well. So if I go back to the presentation, and we've got a couple more plugins we're going to talk about. Um, the next one is is one called All in One WP Migration a bit of a mouthful um, and essentially I'll tell you what that is it's a really good one it allows you to take a backup of your site and again we'll come on to back and why we'd take a backup a bit later on but if you want to take a backup of your site this plugin allows you to do that and then it will allow you to upload it should you need to ever upload it um, and it's very very simple to do and I'll briefly show you how to do it So really, really simple. We know what to do. We know how to add plugins now, don't we? So we go to plugins, we click on add new. We're going to type that name here into the search bar. And you'll see it's here. You know, it's got lots of uh, active installations, over 2 million active installations. So we know it's a, a very popular plugin. It's got good reviews as well. Again, we'll install. And as that's installing, you'll be able to see there's, you know, there's, there's probably hundreds of other plugins that all serve the same purpose that you could also choose from. Um, but I'm just showing you the ones that we work with and I, I like and trust. So we're activating this plugin now and it's really, really easy on how to actually use it. Now it's great for smaller sites. If you've got a really heavy, clunky site, then it, 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 it is a bit difficult, uh, but most sites it will be fine with. So as you can see, now I've actually activated it. You'll be able to see that it pops up now in the left column on the left. And if you want to export here and take a copy of the website, we can just follow the steps. So I can export to my file, so I can export to my own laptop, or I can export to Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever that may be. And I just follow the process and it starts to download. Um, likewise, if you wanted to upload a backup, so let's just say you've done something wrong, 
luckily you've taken that backup but you want to revert back to that backup you downloaded it's the opposite so again if we scroll down we can import and once we've imported that backup you know we can choose where we're importing it from are we importing it from a laptop google drive dropbox whatever it may be and we can restore the website back to that version that we liked before um, another really good plugin is talk to I um, mean may have actually heard of it it's essentially live chat now I can't I can't recommend this enough it is very very effective and it's free as well it doesn't cost a penny and it essentially allows your users to chat in real time um, over your website to you now why is this good because live chat is really good because it accounts for those potential customers that they want an answer in real time but maybe they don't like speaking over the phone so they're much they're much more comfortable um, messaging messaging you over their phone or their laptop maybe they're actually you know at work or something like that and they can't speak so it actually accounts for those customers that wouldn't have actually been able to inquire originally but it's really good technology um, and I'll briefly show you how to actually do this now I'm not going to show you how to configure it top to bottom because we don't have time for that today but it is very simple it won't take more than an hour um, if I leave this presentation and again if i go to plugin so i'm going to add a new plugin well i've already got this plugin but let's pretend that i don't again we're going to put talk to in the box or just talk it will still pop up and you'll see it's this one here we've already got it active over 200,000 active installations and it's got good reviews as well. Um, this is what you would activate and install. Now, it's very, very simple to do. It doesn't actually require any coding as well at all. It's very, very easy. Um, and if, if I can try and show you what it looks like on this end, um, if I can find it. So I'm just going to go on my plugins. I'm going to scroll down to talk to settings. Oh, wow. Well, there's not much here actually, because most of it you actually do on talk to his website. Now, if you go to, you've got the, the URL here and again, I'll just post it in the chat. Uh, now one moment. I just posted that in the chat. If you go to that website, it will prompt you to sign up to an account. And once you've signed up to an account, you'll be able to then download the WordPress plugin and you'll be able to sync both accounts together, your talk to account and your plugin. And you do that by your account settings here. I've already logged into mine, but if you hadn't, that's how you set it up. It's quite simple. Now, most of the configuring is actually done on talk to his website in your user account area. And it's very, very simple to actually configure. And I'll briefly show you what it, what it looks like from a, a consumer point of view. I'll move this over here. Now you can see I'm offline at the moment. I don't want to be online because otherwise I'll be getting loads of pings whilst I'm trying to deliver this webinar. Um, but if I was online, you'd have a little person here. And I've configured mine that it actually pops up after 30 seconds to see if you need any help. And it actually encourages that conversation, which is really good. We want to encourage people to contact us, don't we? Now, obviously, I'm not online at the moment. But nevertheless, if they still want to contact me, they can. They can click on here. They can fill out their details and click submit. And that would come through to my email address for me then to follow up upon. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good um, in terms of actually generating inquiries. So if we go back to the PowerPoint now, there's two more plugins I want to talk to you about, and then we'll take questions about plugins. So we've got WP Fastest Cache. Or, you know, what on earth is this? Um, for those of you who don't know, what, don't know what caching is, it's essentially when your browser almost kind of, to some extent, saves the website. So when, it, so when you actually come back to it, it doesn't, doesn't take as long to actually load the website. So it's really good for repeat users and it speeds up their, their time on the site rather than waiting for everything to load. 
that being said, obviously you shouldn't have a website that takes yonks to load. It should take you know a couple of seconds maximum. But but cache really helps take it to that next level. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install and and look at a couple of settings for how we set up this for our website. Um, but before we do this, I'm just going to explain uh, an idea that I brought up a, a bit earlier on in terms of conflicts. So plugins sometimes conflict with one another when they're trying to do the same thing. So whoever you've got your hosting with, they may have a default plugin that um, syncs with their systems and, and caches the website with, that's in a, in a manner that's better for their hosting setup. For example, if you host your website with SiteGround and then you create a WordPress install, you may find that by default, they include their cache plugin. And obviously, if you're trying to install and activate a different cache plugin, you're gonna have two things doing the same thing. You'll get a warning, or you should get a warning message saying, you know, these plugins conflict with one another, which one would you like? So I, I really like this plugin, WP Fastest Cache. I think it's really effective um, and really good at doing its job. And let's have a look at a couple of things on, on how we'd actually configure this plugin. So I'm gonna go back to WordPress now. And again, let's pretend I don't have it. I've got it, but let's pretend I don't. So we're going to add a new plugin. So we're typing in the plugin name into the search box. As you can see, it's already active. Over a million active installations and it's got five stars, a lot and lots of reviews also. Um, there are lots of other different cache plugins. Some of them are pretty good as well. Um, so, you know, if you do want to find a different, different option, then, then feel free. But this is definitely really good and it does the job and it's completely free. So how on earth do we set this up? can get a bit technical, but don't worry too much. I'll show you how to do it. So again, once you've activated the plugin, it should pop up on the left-hand side. If it doesn't pop up on the left-hand side, you can, make, you can actually probably find it through settings here, but this one has. It's a picture of the tiger here, that's how I remember it. So, it brings you to a default settings options page. Um, if you want, something that's probably maybe a bit easier actually, if you actually screenshot this here, you'll be able to see our exact settings on what we use. Um, and you can obviously mimic this across your website. Um, obviously at the top here, we need to enable the system in the first place to be able to, to check these various boxes. Um, now I'll just talk about a couple of things in a bit, a bit of detail. So um, obviously, we're going to talk about new posts and new pages, really, which is quite important. So what you need to do is if you've, if you've already set up this website and you're adding something new, sorry, if you've already set up this plugin and you're adding a new page to the website, you want people to be able to see that new page, don't you? You don't want it to show that old version of the website that, that has cached in some people's browsers. So you need to clear the cache to make sure everyone can see your new page, don't you? So there's lots of options how we actually do this. Now, I've, by default, I've checked these boxes here, which basically say whenever we update a post, that the cache will be cleared automatically, which is great. But what it doesn't include here, which it, which it really should do, is pages. Pages, we, we more often update pages than posts. And again, I'll come on to the difference very shortly. So every time we actually make a change to a page, we need to clear the cache. And with this plugin, it's really simple and really easy. All we do is go to the top bar here where it says delete cache, and we can clear the cache, <clears throat> or we can delete the cache and the minified CSS JS. Um, if you're not sure, you can do the one below. But once we've cleared this cache, it will, it will stop people's browsers showing that old version, and, and we'll be able to show the new version of the site. And what I mean by new version is when we've updated that page, you'll be able to see the new page. Um, now, what else do you want to talk about? A couple of settings here. So you'll see we've got minify HTML, minify CSS, combine CSS. These are different languages, basically. Now, you can check these and 
once we've checked all these boxes at the bottom, there's a submit button, a submit button for you to, for these changes to take effect, right? Now, what I do once we've actually submitted, once we've actually done all these ticks, is actually have a look at the front end of the website. Is it still working as it should be? You know, is something broken? What we you know, if something's wrong, we need to determine what that actually is. Because sometimes when you minify things, like if we're minifying CSS, minifying HTML, or combining JavaScript, if we're doing anything to a language, basically, sometimes it can have an effect on the front end of the site. So what I'd do is, I mean, it rarely happens, but what I'd do is, I'd, if I was doing this, I'd have a, I'd make these changes, I'd click submit, I'd go to the front end of the website, and I'd just make sure everything was as it was. And if it wasn't, maybe I'd go back one by one and see which uh, box actually caused that to happen and, and, and work it out from there. Most of the time it'll be okay though. So this is briefly how we, um, how we set up for, for caching. Again, um, if you want to screenshot that, feel free. Um, if not, I can always do it and send it across as well. So if we go back to the presentation, um, we've got the final plugin before a couple of questions. Um, so Yoast SEO, um, it's a very, very popular plugin and a really good, a really good one to help you with your on-page SEO. Well, for those of you that don't know what SEO is, it stands for Search Engine Optimization. And there's another webinar about it. Uh, I'm not sh too sure where it, when it is, but it, it, it's occurring shortly. Um, and it's the process of essentially ranking your website on Google and the, you know, it's the process of that your website coming to the top of Google because obviously you want your website to be seen, you want people to come to it, you want people to inquire and that results in sales. And in terms of SEO, we're really good at this. If you type in SEO leads, you type in SEO company leads, SEO services leads, anything to do with SEO and leads, you'll find that we're number one or we're number two. So it's something that we do really well and having a really good website is crucial to having really good organic SEO rankings. So what is Yoast? Well, Yoast is a plugin that helps you with the on-page aspect of SEO. And what on earth is that? Well, SEO is a process. And one of the, one of the parts of the process is putting your content, so maybe your text, your images on a page on your website, but in an SEO-friendly manner, in an SEO-friendly format. And Yoast helps us identify what we can do to improve. And again, I'll show you an example. So if I go back to my, <clears throat> my WordPress installation, and now I'll, I'll choose a random page. Um, and we've got, well, we've got 80 published pages. Let me show you our SEO leads page, and that may give you a bit of an indication. Um, I believe it's this one. So this will just take a minute to load, but as it loads, I'm just gonna talk you through what you do with Yoast. So again, very, very simple. We know how to add plugins and install plugins. So you type in Yoast into the search function, you install it and you activate it. Now what Yoast will do is it will, it will open like a little start, a startup box. So you just fill in some details about the business, any social media accounts, you upload your logo, basic informational stuff, and then you, you basically can finish it. And once you've done that, Yoast will be installed in all your pages and post areas. So again, we'll come on to this. This may look quite kind of foreign to begin with, but we'll come on to pages and page builders very, very shortly. I think it's the next section. But this is our SEO page. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything from the back end, from the, from the from this end of the site, but from the front end, you'll be, you'll be able to see, if I go to the page, it's a fully functional page um, with lots of, lots of really good content. If I just scroll down, you'll be able to see we've got lots of text, a couple of images, and a contact form. Now, this is all the content we've got on the page, but how do I know if this content is on the page in an SEO-friendly manner? Well, Yoast is a really good indicator. And if I scroll down to Yoast, I'll get there eventually. Um, this is what Yoast looks like. 
Um, I'm just going to scroll down slightly. Here we go. So this area here is our Yoast section. It allows us to change what Google will see, what, what users will see when they're on Google. So we can change the title, we can change what's called the description here. And as you can see, we score a green in terms of our SEO analysis, which is good. Now, even if you score a green, there's a lot, there's a lot more to SEO than simply scoring green in Yoast. It's just one major part of the process. But if I open this, you'll be able to see there's lots of things. There's, there's, there's basically, it organizes your content into three different areas. Reds being, you know, problems that you need to address. Ambers being things that, you know, you could do to improve. And green being things that you've done a good result on. So as you can see, we've got lots of green stuff here. We've got a couple of reds. Now these actually aren't reds. It's just that because we've got custom code on our site, it's not picking it up. The plugin's not picking it up. So these are actually greens, but it's not reading the custom code. Um, and again, you could test that independently um, by looking at the source code to make sure. So sometimes, you know, take it with a pinch of salt if it throws up a red and you're sure that you've done that work to make it a green. And you can always check in the source code. Um, but as you can see, it's things like making sure you've got outbound links. An outbound link is a link from your website to another website. Internal links, an internal link is a link from a page on your website to a different page on your website. And um, keyword density, so having the keyword listed on that page a certain number of time, you know, if you're looking around 3%, so our keyword was found 16 times, I think our content's around 2000 words, so that's a good, a good ratio. Um, so there's lots, I mean, again, I can do a whole two days on this, and there's lots of different things that you need to pay attention to, but Yoast is a really good way of, of, of making you aware of what you need to do. For example, if the keyword density wasn't good enough, Yoast would say, right, well, you know what? You've only mentioned the keyword three times, it's a red, and you need to action that and mention it more times. So I'm just conscious of time, we've still got to talk about pages and posts and updating, so I'm gonna end um, the plugin section here and just welcome any you know, maybe a couple of questions before we move on to the next section. Hi, Marco. Yes, yes, we do have quite a few questions. Um, and the first one being, is a business account needed to download plugins? Um, my premium account won't let me download plugins. Um, could you help with that? Uh, yeah, of course. So, um, it depends what plugins you're installing. So if you're installing free, plug free, free plugins, which most of the ones I've shown you, I think all of them, the ones I've, I've shown you today are free, you shouldn't need to have any certain accounts. You simply, you can do that from your WordPress dashboard. Um, so again, if we go to plugins here on the left-hand side and add new, it shouldn't ask you to log, you know, it shouldn't ask you for any business accounts. It should be, you should be able to do it um, free of charge. However, if you are trying to download premium plugins, maybe on that website that I posted earlier, Theme Forest, then obviously you've got to have an account and you've got to pay for such premium plugins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another person is asking, are you a Google partner? No, we're not a Google partner. <laughs> um, all right. Um, next one. Just one second. Um, I use 123 Reg and I think I could change to WordPress. Can you advise, please? Okay, um, I think you're talking, you're maybe mixing up two separate things there. So, one, two, three, reg, um, essentially, I suppose I need to speak to that person individually, but what you could do on one, two, three, reg is you could, I don't know if you've got the website hosted with them, but if you don't, you can direct your domain name from one, two, three, reg to an alternate host, and then on that host, you can install WordPress. If you do have your hosting with one, two, three, reg, um, you can you can just ins install WordPress. It's probably best if you message me um, at the end, and I can better direct your. Um, I suppose it's a very niche question, but I suppose mm -hmm. just a note on the Google Partner thing. It's very common for companies that do PPC, which is pay per click, to be a Google Partner. Um, it's not an area that we spend too much time in. Therefore, it's not worth our time getting that accreditation, but. If you're a pay click agency, then you certainly need that accreditation to, to get any meaningful work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another one, regarding the plugins, 
Um, can you talk a little about the Word Fence app, as there has been quite a bit um, in the news recently about hacks? Yeah, sure. So um, Word Fence is basically just another security plugin. So it's similar to the one that we discussed, which is iTheme Security. And a couple of our sites do use Word Fence, although I, I still prefer iThemes. Um, so your WordPress, uh, Word, sorry, Word Fence is a good alternative. In terms of kind of hacks and, and stuff like that, we'll come on to that at the very end, because at the end we're going to talk about how we update web, our websites and how we essentially keep it as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, quite a similar question. So I have a, the WordFence security plugin installed. Is it equivalent to iTheme security and what are the main kind of differences? Um, that's a good question. So both plugins, both iThemes and WordFence, they have a free and a premium uh, version. So you'll find that both versions are somewhat similar. Um, obviously, you can do a lot more with the premium one. However, I still, I still believe that if you set up your website in the right manner and you're proactive with your maintenance, then you don't really need the premium one. It does help, don't get me wrn um, but if you've got a low, a low risk site, maybe you're not, you know, you're not dealing with any money over the site, it's simply a, a five page brochure informational site, then I'd argue that you don't need it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, all right, um, another one is, if I don't have a cache clearance plugin when updating the items for my sale in my e-commerce website, uh, will the viewer, uh, the visitor, still see the new sale items or will they see the old page without the new items? Well, that's a good question. Um, you'd, have to, you'd have to try it. So, I mean, what I'd do anyway, if you're adding new items, I'd, I'd just clear the clash anyway, just, just to be sure it only takes one second, and at least that way they can see everything that's new. Um, so I'd, I'd probably just I'd do that and reassess and you'll be able to, to see from then if it works or not. Yeah, okay, excellent. Um, the last one for, at the moment, um, we've got, I have the WooCommerce plugin installed and a new version is available. And the new version is available. When I click update plugins, the following message comes up. This is a major update. Are you sure you're ready? Is it safe to go ahead with update, please? Yeah. Um, what I'll do is I'll cover that in the last section about updating um, because obviously before we want to update and especially before we're, we're doing major updates, we want to make, make sure we're doing it in the right way so that even if we update and something goes wrong, we've always got something to fall back on. So I'll cover that very, very shortly in the last section. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we've got one more. Um, does the cache clear the WordPress page 424? Um, I think that's the version 4.2.4. Not really sure, to be honest. Um, does the cache clear the WordPress page 4 to 4? Um, I'm not too sure what, what's meant by the question, I'm afraid. Yeah, if, um, you know, it's anonymous at ND that uh, asked this question. If you can, um, you know, specify a question a little bit clearer, uh, we can come back to it a little bit later. And for now, uh, Marco, we are good to continue. Great, perfect. Well, those are really good questions. So um, I hope I did my best to, to answer them. Um, so we're going to move on to pages and posts now. <clears throat> well, you know, what are pages and posts? We spoke about them a bit, a bit earlier. Um, a page is, is what it is, really. It's a new page. So for example, it could be a home page, an about page, a service page, a contact page, stuff like that. It's the main parts of your, of your website. The difference between a page and a post, a post is something like a blog post. So if you've got a blog and you have, you know, kind of snappy, snappy blog posts, or maybe you've got a news section and you release posts in that format. And WordPress differentiates between pages and posts. It's quite good, actually. And I'll briefly show you the difference before we move on to page builders. So if I exit, uh, exit this, sorry, and go to... Um, Go to the WordPress dashboard, we'll start from, start from scratch again. And you'll see the pages and the posts, again, everything is lifted. Uh, every, everything is, is listed in the left column here. So we've got posts and we've got pages. And I'll just show you a quick example of each. So let's go to the about page. This is the about page of our site, that's a page. Um, a post, would be if we go to our blog, you'd be able to see we've got lots of different 
blog posts and I think this is one that Louise wrote earlier this year. This is what a post looked like. Um, it's you know tr traditionally a bit more, um, there's normally a sidebar here with different things in. So we've got a featured image, title, some content. Again, in the sidebar, there's different options you know, to subscribe to a mailing list. There can be all sorts of things you can pop in here. Um, recent projects. This is a blog post. And again, if we scroll down, let's skip all the content, you'll find related articles, you'll find who the author is, a bit about the author, you can share it. That's the main difference with a blog as opposed to a page. Um, uh, again, you can even comment as a user. Whereas a page, if we go to the about page, it's a typical web, a typical web page with information, content. It doesn't have an option to, to comment. Um, it's just how it is. Now, normally, again, with pages, if it's a simple site, we normally have a home page, an about page, a service page, contact page, something like that. Other ideas of pages could be on our work on our work or portfolio section. Maybe you you know careers in terms of hiring. Um, all sorts, um, whereas the blog or the news area would be where you put the posts. Um, now, I'll show you what the difference is in terms of how we access them in WordPress. If we start off with posts, if we click on to posts, we'll be able to see our current, our current posts. So we've got 19 posts all around WordPress, SEO, etc. Um, and if you wanted to add a new post, we simply click on this button to add a new post. Now, again, it all depends what page builder or what, and what theme you're using. And we'll come on to that really shortly, page builders that is, um, in terms of what it'll actually look like. So if I'm going to click through on one of them, let's see if I can describe it a bit better. <clears throat> so let's wait for it to load. Okay, so I can see on our website how we actually create a post is by using the page builder. Now, what is a page builder? A page builder is, is a plugin that comes with your theme. If you buy a premium theme, you'll most likely have a page builder that comes with it. And the page builder is a plugin that allows you to build pages and, and, and also build posts in this instance, but sometimes it's just pages. Uh, and again, I'll talk to you a bit about the page builder and how it works, but I suppose it's important to note that every page builder is different. They have a similar pur their purpose, but they're all different in terms of how you actually work them. So I suppose when you're actually looking for a theme, when you're looking for a premium theme, have a look at what page builder they use and make sure you kind of like that page builder and, it's, and it agrees with you. There's two different types of, well, generally speaking, there's two different types of page builders. Um, ones like these that are more kind of, not back-end, but more, less visual, so to speak. So obviously this just looks like, it doesn't look like the website, does it? It looks, doesn't look like the front end of the website at all. Um, however, you can get page builders that are very visual and it's very, very easy to imagine what that page will look like. And I'll give you a couple of names. I mean, this is WP Bakery. And again, I'll... I'll post these in the chat shortly. I'll just make a note of that. Um, I'll give you some page builders to have a look at and research. Um, but this one is, 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 I suppose, it's a bit the harder one to, to master. It's not rocket science, but it's a, bit, it's a bit harder because you can't actually visualize the page of the website. But as I scroll down, you can see we've got heading sections here. So we put the heading in. We've got a text block. This is a paragraph text where we can edit the text. Let me scroll down to something different. And it's a blog post, so there's not going to be much different, but let me try and find. So here we've got some links, so the blue and the line, we've got some internal links to different, well, that's an external link to a, a website, that's an internal link. But just to show you something different, if I click on a plus, if I click that plus button, you can see there's so many things here that I can do with this page builder. Um, I can add an image, I can add a Facebook like section, I can add another heading if I wanted to. I can add a pie chart. There's, there's endless things you can do with this page board, and that's why I quite like it. It takes a bit more time to learn it, but once you learn it, it's very, very flexible. 
I could also have a Google map here and you know, display our Google map location. There's so much you can do with this page builder. It's really, really good. You know, I could go on for hours. Um, so it's important to kind of get to know a page builder and it wouldn't be something that we do in this, in this webinar. I simply wouldn't have the time. We'd need a couple of days really to go over a page builder with, with, that, with that detail. But what I'm gonna do now is before I move on is I'm just gonna go into the chat area and I'm just going to put down a couple of page builders um, that I recommend. So the first one, the first one that I, this website is using is WP Bakery. Uh, and that's pretty good. And, and it, it's also called, just to confuse you even more, Visual Composer. It's got, it's got two names. Now you'll find a lot of themes by default have this plugin attached to it. So when you actually download, when you actually, sorry, upload that theme that you've downloaded, you'll find that it comes with this. Another really good one, which to be honest, I think is a better starting point, is Elementor. It's a bit more visual, so you, it'd be a lot easier to actually see the changes that you're making without having to make them. Um, so there are a couple to kind of research and just see what you like. Again, if you're not sure which one you actually prefer, you can YouTube these and just watch some videos and just see which you think's right for you. Now, this is, this is the post format. So now we're gonna go and have a look at pages. Um, and I don't know, let's choose any page, it doesn't really matter I suppose. Let's choose the first one that we actually um, see. Give it, give it a minute for it to load. <coughs> Now you, you'll see here that it's very similar to the post. You know, again, it uses the same page builder, WP Bakery. Um, but you'll be able to see a few more things here. You know, you can see we've got an image here, so we've used the image function. Again, if we click the plus, we could add anything else beneath that. Again, whatever we wanted to add, we can pretty much, we've got it here in the page builder. So this is the difference between a page and a post. Again, it may not sound like much, and to be honest, it isn't much if your website is very kind of page orientated. But if you have like a, a website that is a news website, like almost like a, a publication house, something like that, then you'd have lots more blog posts as opposed to pages. But most websites have, have more pages than posts. Now, I'm just conscious of the time. So um, I'm gonna revert back to the PowerPoint. Maybe it's a bit bigger, sorry. So we've talked about pages and posts in a little bit of detail, not too much. We've spoken about page builders and they've given you there two to, to have a look and to research and to find out which one suits you best. Once you've maybe found one that you like, um, you can look for themes on that website I gave you, Theme Forest, and you'll be able to see, if you click on that theme that you like, what page builder they actually use. So you can say, right, well, I really like the Elementor page builder because it's quite easy to use. Well, I want to find a theme of Elementor and you'll be able to find that um, by filtering the themes that have that on the website that I gave you. So I'm conscious that there's really a lot to talk about here. We've just gone over it at a very brief level. So before we move on to the last section, which is about updating and, and maintaining the site, are there any questions here at all? Okay, I can see um, I can see Paula talking about Beaver Builder. Um, if I remember rightly, we, we, we inherited a site that had that. Um, it's it's all right. Um, I know a lot of people do use it. It's not one that we like to use. Um, I suppose for us, if you put, put yourself in our shoes, it's a lot easier if we are specialists in one or two page builders than trying to master them all. Um, so it's always down to personal preference, really. I suppose just another note is some page builders are really clunky and slow, which has, which means two things. Firstly, it's going to take you ages to edit the page, but secondly, it may take, it may actually increase your loading time on your website when you're trying to load that page, which is a big no-no. So it's always about choosing a page builder that's not clunky, it's lightweight, and it's not going to slow you down. 
Um, I'm just going to scroll up here and just see if we've got any other questions. Um, so, Akala, it looks like you've got an issue with, with plugins. What we'll do is we'll address it at the end, but you shouldn't, you will not need a premium account to download plugins. Um, maybe it's set up in an incorrect way, but you definitely will not need um, a business account at all. We certainly don't have one. Right, so we're going to move on now to um, to the, the last section before the Q and A. So, updating. Well, this is probably the most important section of the whole slide. Um, it's really, really important. Um, if you are wanting to go down WordPress, the route of WordPress to have your website, which I definitely recommend, I mean, our websites using WordPress, and we're at the top of Google for hundreds of keywords, and it drives us a lot of business, um, you need to do it in the right manner. You need to ensure that you update your software at a timely manner, a minimum once a month. Um, and we're going to talk about the process and how we actually go about doing that. So let me revert back to the website, the dashboard. Now, I doubt I'll be able to, sh okay. So let's just say for imagine we've logged into our WordPress website. And if there was anything to update here, where I'm just hovering over in the update section, there'd be a red a red number with the number of things that we need to update, but obviously everything here is up to, up to date as it should be, that's great. <clears throat> so what you need to do is you need to kind of set aside, it doesn't need to take long, maybe half an hour, an hour, a month, and, and that's dedicated to essentially in protecting your website, updating it, and making sure that even if the thing does happen, then you're able to recover. So, Let's just say you log in on the first of the month to, to conduct the maintenance. Well, what are you going to do first of all? First of all, before you do anything at all, even if you want to make any changes, I take a backup of your website. Now, what, you know, why would you do that? Well, the question is, let's just say you've made a change and you brought down the site. You know, what are you going to do then? You've got nothing to revert it to, so you need to have a backup. Now, again, it all depends how you set up your website. So with our hosts, we, we have an automatic backup taken less than once a day. So, you know, it's backed up all the time, basically. So if anything happens, we've got a backup to revert to. However, if you don't want to pay for that, then there's a free way of doing it. So if you remember earlier on, we talked about a plugin all in one WP migration where you're allowed to take a backup. Well, all you have to simply do is install that plugin, activate it and take the backup. So then you've got a backup just in case anything goes wrong when you're updating your website, whether that be you're updating software, or maybe you're adding a new page as well. So step, you know, rule number one is always to have a backup just in case. It's good practice. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you the number of people that have come across that and they'll update something or add a new page and something happens, the website goes down and there's nothing to back it up to. And we have to dish out a backup from last month and they've lost an awful lot of time that they've invested in updating the site you know, within that past month. So really important. Now, once we've actually taken the backup and we're happy, you know, we're ready to update, or we're ready to add a new page, whatever that, whatever that may be, we can do that. Now, I'm gonna try and replicate what you do to update a site, because there are no available updates on, on our website. You click through to the update section here. We'll just wait for that to load. Let me try again. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, everything's up to date, which is great. This is where we want to be. Everything's up to date. Plugins are up to date. Themes are up to date. We've got the latest version of WordPress. Really good. Happy days. Well, let's assume that we had something to update. And this, you know, more often than not, if you log in on a monthly basis, you'll have various things to update. So once we've taken a backup, we can actually update these one by one. Now, what I do is the best practice is there will be a button for you to bulk update everything 
um, would I do that? Maybe if you get to know those plugins better, you could take that risk. However, to start off with, I'd do everything one by one. And it only takes one click to update a plugin. It would basically just have something here and a button to update. So you click that button, you know, wait 30 seconds, however long it takes to make that update. Now, once that update is live and, and, it's, and it's taken effect, I then test the website. So let's say, I don't know, it was, a, it was an update for a contact form. So we had a plugin for a contact form. I've just updated it. Well, you know what? I'm going to go to the website. First of all, I'm going to clear the cache so I can see the most recent version. And then I'm going to test the contact form, make sure that contact form works. And if it works and the website looks good, you know, I'm going to be happy and move on to the next update and just work through one by one. Now, obviously, if you come to a point where you're not happy and you've updated something and it's not worked or it's, it's something's gone wrong, you then have that backup to install uh, and, you know, you haven't lost all that work that you've done so far. So that's, that's best practice when it comes to actually maintaining and updating websites. Have a more conservative, proactive approach rather than a reactive, you know, a reactive fix where something goes wrong and, you know, you don't, you're not showing the version of the website that you want to show to your potential customers. Um, again, there's lots of different software you can use to help you out here as well. So there's third party software that will allow you to take automatic backups, which is great. Doesn't, you know, it saves you from logging in, installing all in one WP migration, taking the backup, you know, and waiting all that time. And if your time is, you know, scarce, then you can get third parties to do that for you on your behalf, which is great. But I would recommend at least on a monthly basis to update everything um, and if you notice something that's not right and you're not sure um, more often than not someone may have encountered that same issue so you can google the issue or you can have a look at the support area for that particular theme or for that particular plugin and you'll be able to see the people that have had similar a similar issue to yours and hopefully there'll be an answer for it if there's not an answer for it you can open a support support request with that plugin developer or with the theme developer and you can get it fixed that way. And in the meantime, at least you've got that back, backed up version of the site that you're happy with that you can show to your potential customers. Um, so I suppose in terms of updates, if I just move back to the PowerPoint, of course, I'll just reiterate, we've got to back up, then we update, and then we can test again. Um, again, something that I suppose I've missed out from this is to clear the cache. Again, it all depends how you've configured your your WordPress settings, but obviously before you're testing things, just clear the cache so you can see the most recent version of the site. Um, I mean, that's pretty much the, the, the structure and the overview for today's content. And now what I've done is I've left about 15 minutes now for any questions. Um, so if you do have any questions, anything about what we've spoken so far, or anything else that maybe I've missed out that you're not sure about, um, now's the time to ask. Um, so I'll hand it over to you. Yes, thank you, Marco. Um, yeah, we do have a healthy number of questions. Uh, <laughs> so the first one would be, um, please, could you let me know if there is added security for talk to um, plugin? I don't believe there is. I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. Um, I don't think there's, a, there's an added security for talk to. Um, or most, most of your WordPress security will be done for your security plugin. So in this case, iThemes or maybe WordFence if you want to use WordFence. But I, I, I can't recall talk to having any additional security settings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another one. Um, should you update all plugins to the newest versions? And, you know, if so, why? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I never like being first to update plugins because sometimes, obviously, if you're first to update, um, sometimes some developers don't test them properly, uh, but you get to know who they are over time. Um, I, I don't like to update straight away and that's the reason for it. So I normally give it a couple of days. Now, obviously if it's a major update with a, with a vulnerability, then of course I'm going to update as soon as possible. And our software tells us when there's a, a major update and also when there's an update that's, you know, you have to do it ASAP because there's a current security issue. But if there's no urgent issue, I'd always just wait a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. We've got a, an issue on the contact page. So is widescreen on a contact page caused by a clash of plugins such as Google Maps and Contact 7? 
I do believe Contact 7 is a plugin as well. So um, yeah, they're having an issue um, having a white page on their contact page. It, it, it's, it's impossible for me to say without having a look at it. Um, feel free to email me. You've got my email there on the screen. Feel free to email me the page and I can have a look at it and try and see if I can help. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, fair enough. Um, another one is um, how do you view your pages as you create them? Right, that's a good question. I'll show you now then. So if I just exit this PowerPoint, I'll go back to pages. Now again, it all comes back to how you're, how you're building the page and which page builder you actually use. So we're using WP Bakery, as mentioned before, um, and they adopt the generic WordPress approach to how you preview a page, and I'll show you how to do this now, which is great. Other plugins will have their own bespoke way of doing it, but this is the better way because most plugins adopt this approach. So let's just say, I don't know, I want to edit the, I want to edit the header of this page. So I'm going to go in here, uh, I'm going to type in the word test. Not there. I'm going to type in the word test. Now, it's a great question because you should not just update this page. Obviously, you want to test it first before you update the page. So how we do that is, you can see there's a little preview button here. Now, if I also scroll up, there's a preview button here as well. This is where it'll always be on all WordPress pages and posts. So it's you know, probably best using this one. Um, if I click on this preview changes, It'll open a new tab and it'll incorporate all the changes we've made for us to re review. Right, well this change looks really good. I've got the added word test in here. I'm happy with it, it looks great. There's one final step now. So I'm not gonna do it now because I don't, I don't want to make that change, but if I wanted to make that change, let me move this down here, I click update here. So you click update and it would make that change real. And then obviously you can double check it and make sure that change is actually made in real time, but I'm not going to do that. So I hope that um, answers the question. Yep, yep great. Um, sounds easy, looks easy when you know how to do it. <laughs> um, another one is um, how many tags do you recommend to add to a post? So I think that's hashtags or just tags um, in your blog post. Yeah. Um, um, we don't add too many tags. I don't really, we don't get a massive benefit from it. Um, if you've got a website that again is news related where people search the website through tags and yeah, go for it. That's great on our website and, and most of the websites, it's, it's very rarely how they operate. Um, so I wouldn't say there's an optical, an optimal number. Um, but if you, if you allow your users to search through that, then yeah, maybe give them that option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another one, and that's a good one. Um, we have a company who does our website design. Um, when they are making changes, is there an easy way for them to do all of this offline and then send us a link before publishing, publishing it for all of us to see? Yes, there is. So you can have what's called a, a staging site. And again, most hosting suppliers offer a staging site, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's not a live website. It's, it's something that can't be accessed and you can share that with other people and then once obviously the client approves it you can then swap that staging site over the live website you can do that it normally costs a bit more to have that level of of, of software and that level of service but it is possible yes mm -hmm. okay um another one i was recommended to use the updraft plus plugin for backups um do you prefer all-in-one wordpress mi migra uh, migration to updraft plus um, th that's a good question. Um, Uftrack Plus is, is really good, um, especially if you're using the premium version. I found the free version to be not so great, but the premium one does the job. Um, the reason why I use all-in-one WP migration is because, uh, I mean, I, I rarely use it because we've got software that automatically backs up everything. But if I'm manually switching over a site from a test site to a live site, I use something like all-in-one WP migration because it's just so easy to use on a one-off basis, but I wouldn't use it on a monthly basis because you know we maintain 120 websites. To do that mm -hmm. manually would take weeks. So we've got obviously software that does it automatically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another one, um, how do you know how many web visitors you have once you build the website? 
Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. There's lots of ways of doing this. The easiest one to do is to set up a Google Analytics account. Mm -hmm. So if you just type in Google Analytics, create an account. Once you've created that account, it will give you some code to put into your website. Um, but don't be afraid, it's actually very, very easy to do. And I'll quickly show you how we actually do that, in fact. Okay. Um, um, so let's pretend we've gone to Google Analytics, we've created an account, and once you've created an account, it will actually give you the code to put on your website. And it will tell you to insert it in the header of the website. Well, there's a plugin to use, and I'm not sure if we've got it installed on our site. Uh, oh, we do. It's called Insert Headers and Footers. Mm -hmm. So if I just wait a minute and it will load up, and it allows you to add code into your header, into the body, into the footer. So as you can see right now, this is in fact the Google Analytics cloud. So just copy and paste the code into the header plugin here and click save at the bottom. Um, now this plugin is called insert headers and footers if you want to note that down. And it's, really, it's a really good shortcut. I mean, you can put it in manually if you want, but this will save you a lot of time. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, the last one, uh, well, at this very moment we've got um, if you don't renew your domain, how long does it take before it becomes publicly, publicly available to buy again? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't really know, to be honest, but um, probably a, a matter of days or weeks, or maybe a month maximum. I, I, I don't know, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, <laughs> um, one more, I think. I use the Updraft Plus free version, and for some reason, it would only update to 70%. Um, I'm not sure if you know the reason for that, to be honest. Uh, well, that, that, that's the reason why I don't like the free version of Updraft Plus. I, I've never had a good experience with it. The premium version is good, um, but the free version is always difficult. So um, if, I'd, I'd recommend either WP or you know, the all-in-one migration or Another option is, is to do a, a hosting level. So you actually get your host to back up your WordPress site. Some of your host, hosting suppliers do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, no, fair enough. Um, we've got one more. Um, my website takes a long time to load. I have lots of images, but keep most of them under 300 megabytes. Do you think it's the plugins that cause the speed issue? I have 22 plugins installed. Oh, good question. Right. I'm going to send now two links um, to, and that will tell you the answer. So let me find where the chat function is. Um, if you go to these two websites and run a speed test, it will tell you exactly what is causing your website to slow down. Mm -hmm. So the first one is called um, G metrics. Um, if you put, pop that into Google, I've just put it in the chat now. Mm -hmm. and paste your website address in there and it will tell you exactly why your website's being slow. The second one, which is also good, is Pingdom, it's a Pingdom speed test. I normally run both of them just to see what they throw up. And the good mm -hmm. thing about them is you can run the test now, make the changes that they recommend and then run the test afterwards and you can actually see the difference on, and, and the impact of what your changes made. Mm -hmm. and there's also, there's Google, there's a Google test you can use if you just type in you know, Google speed test, although it doesn't give you that much actionable data, data whereas Geometrics and Pingdom actually give you a bit more to act on, which is great. But by the sounds of things, if you're keeping your images below 300 megabytes and you've got 22 plugins, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't it's, it's hard to say, but what I, I would use is a plugin called Smush. S, I'm gonna write it in the, um, I'll write it in the chat now. So Smush is a plugin that basically optimizes images and again, the free version is good enough. You don't need to pay for it. And if you run that through, you'll be able to actually see, um, well, it'll, be, it'll optimize your images and you can then run the test again and see how much time you've saved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we've got one more question. Um, it's from Helen. Um, I'm building a website with lots of videos. I don't want to use lots of YouTube links. Want to, act want to use actual uploads. How can I prevent the web running slowly? Oh, um, uh, from a hosting point of view, you could get a CDN. I mean, they are expensive. Um, you know, you're talking about a couple of hundred pounds a year, but it will improve your speed. 
Um, the, the, the thing is with video, I mean, video is great. We've got video on our site, we use it. Um, and it's really good. But the pros of video is people stay on the page for longer, right? Which is a big, a big win in Google's eyes. But obviously the downside to video is it takes longer to load. So it's always about getting the right balance. So make sure you've maybe got only one video maximum on each page. Because if there's, if there's various videos on a page, it can really slow things down. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to maximize speed at that level, I'd, I'd speak with your host. You can normally upgrade to a CDN and lots of little upgrades to basically get a faster service rather than the, you know, the standard, um, you know, however much it is to get your standard hosting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, at the moment, we don't have any more questions, but before all of you go, I just want to let uh, people know that we've got our next um, webinar taking place on Monday next week, and it will be on LinkedIn Masterclass session part to profile and target your A-list clients. So if you're looking to, you know, at improving your LinkedIn skills, this is the webinar for you. Uh, and you can book this on our website at this very moment and a follow-up link with the webinar booking um, link will be sent in the follow-up email as long as the post webinar survey, which we would be very grateful if you could all complete it. And if you do have any more questions in the meantime, please do not hesitate to ask because we've got, you know, up until half 12, we can still, be here well at least i can i'm not sure about you marco <laughs> but if you do have any more questions you know um, please please do send them across yeah. and we'll, uh, able, we'll be able to uh, um, answer